The hope and goal with every NBA trade is to try and make the team better by giving away as little as possible and getting back as much as you can in return. Well, in these seven trades, these teams pretty much did the opposite of that. And there's way too many bad trades in NBA history to look at all of them, so we're gonna look at the seven worst trades of the past 10 years, starting with Number seven, the bad Isaiah Thomas traits. IT was in a string of terrible traits here for most of his career, so we're gonna go through all of them. He started out on the Kings, surprised everyone, and was putting up 20 and six by his third year in the league. And the Kings pouncing on an opportunity to mess up their roster as soon as they see one, traded him away to the Suns for a trade exception and Alex Oriaki, who never played a game for them. And seeing the player that Thomas would become, this is definitely one of the most lopsided trades this decade. But it doesn't stop there, because it gets worse with the fact that the Suns made that trade when they already had Eric Bledsoe and Goran Dragic. So now they had three starting caliber point guards, and when it shockingly didn't work, they traded Thomas, who had just put up 15 a game for them coming off the bench, for Marcus Thornton and a first round pick. And I mean that's not as bad because of the pick, but it's still bad. And his lopsided traits continue with number six, when the Cavs traded Kyrie Irving to the Celtics. But this time, Isaiah Thomas is on the other end of the bad trade, when the Celtics traded him along with Jay Crowder and a first round pick to the Cavs in exchange for Kyrie Irving. Now, Kyrie demanded to be traded before the 2017 season started, and that put Cleveland in the hot seat, which meant that they had to find a trade that would keep LeBron happy and quick. And a lot of the time, when a scenario like this happens, Teams usually end up getting a bad deal in return, and that's what happened here. Isaiah Thomas was just coming off of putting up 29 points a game for the season and going off in the playoffs before going out with a hip injury. But even with his insane season, it was still known that Kyrie Irving and a couple of other guys were still better point guards. But given their situation, the Cavs went through with trading Kyrie to the Celtics. Now the Cavs almost declined the trade when they learned about the severity of Isaiah's hip, but an extra second round pick convinced them to take the deal, and they instantly regretted it. Because Thomas was never fully healthy, and got traded away halfway through the year for Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. And then that Nets pick ultimately turned into Colin Sexton. Which means that they ultimately got these three guys for arguably the second best point guard in the league making this without a doubt one of the worst trades of the decade. And on top of that, a rumor did go around that one of the reasons LeBron left was because of how badly the Cavs handled this situation. So on top of all of that, it partly cost them LeBron James too. Meanwhile, the Celtics have been one of the top teams in the East for the past two seasons with a big thanks to Kyrie. Number five, the Pacers trade Kawhi Leonard for George Hill. The Spurs drafted George Hill back in 2008, and ever since then, the Pacers had a weird obsession with him. They tried to make a trade for him that season, and that failed. And then, in 2010, they almost traded away the 10th pick in the draft for him, but instead decided to take Paul George. So for that season, the Pacers had Danny Granger, and a young Roy Hibbert, Paul George, and Lance Stevenson. But throughout the season, their one main weakness was at point guard. So during the 2011 draft, with the 15th overall pick, the Pacers picked Kawhi Leonard and immediately traded him to the Spurs for Hill. To think that that Pacers team could have added Kawhi Leonard is insane. But instead, as we all saw, George Hill played for the Pacers for 5 seasons, averaging 12 points and 3 assists a game, and was never able to help the Pacers dethrone the LeBron-led Miami Heat. But on the other hand, for the Spurs, Kawhi Leonard quickly became one of the best players in the league, a two-time Defensive Player of the Year, consistently showed up in the MVP race, averaged over 25 a game in his best season there, oh yeah, and was the guy on one of the teams that could actually stop LeBron James in the Heat when the Spurs won the championship in 2014, and Kawhi won the Finals MVP award. Now, of course, the Spurs were a much better team than the Pacers, but you still gotta wonder if the Pacers could have stopped the Heat in those close Eastern Conference series by adding one LeBron stopper in Kawhi Leonard. Number 4, James Harden gets traded to the Rockets. We all remember the days where Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, Serge Ibaka, and James Harden were all on the same team. And most of us also know that the reason it blew up was because of money, with James Harden saying that he definitely would have stayed if the money was right. Russ and KD had gotten their big contracts in 2011, Serge Ibaka signed a 4 year $48 million deal in 2012, and then that left James Harden who wanted a 4 year $60 million contract, but OKC said they were only willing to give him $55 million. 
because if they would have given him any more, they would have gone over the luxury tax limit. And giving him that extra $5 million would have cost them $15 million in taxes the next season. And that wasn't something they were willing to do, because I'm sure that they didn't think he'd turn out to be a future league MVP. And this is where the Houston Rockets come in, who got Harden in return for Kevin Martin, who played on the Thunder for one season, Jeremy Lamb, who averaged 7 points a game for OKC, and the pick that would become Steven Adams, which has ended up by far being the best part of that deal. Now for Harden, it's clear that it was better that he was traded, and OKC didn't really have much of a choice. But for what they did end up getting in return, for the man who's the reigning MVP, still makes this one of the most lopsided trades in league history. Number 3, the Clippers trade away the Kyrie Irving pick. Now this is a terrible trade that I forgot actually went down and honestly could have cost the Clippers a championship. Because back in 2010, the Clippers had just gotten Blake Griffin, Al Farouk Aminu, and Eric Bledsoe in the NBA draft. To team up with guys like Eric Gordon, Chris Kamen, DeAndre Jordan, and Baron Davis, who they already had on the roster. But then you fast forward to the 2011 trade deadline that year, and they're 16 games under 500. And then they go and think that it's a good idea to trade their unprotected first round pick for Jamario Moon and Mo Williams. Well, it was a terrible idea because those guys barely made any difference on the team and the Clippers ended up finishing with the 7th worst record in the league and clutching the first overall pick in the draft, which because of that trade went to Cleveland who picked Kyrie Irving. Now if the Clippers would have kept that pick, they wouldn't have felt the need to correct their mistake and trade Gordon, Kamen, and Aminu for Chris Paul. They could have teamed Kyrie up with Blake and kept those three guys to trade for another star. But instead, they just had to have Mo Williams and Jamario Moon. Number 2, the Nets lose out on Damian Lillard. In the 2011 lockout season, the Nets had Brooke Lopez and Darren Williams leading their team. But they were trying to go from a bad team to a playoff team. So at the trade deadline, they were planning a big offer for Dwight Howard. But he unexpectedly committed to staying with the Magic for the season. So since they couldn't get him, they started looking around the league for other additions they could make to the roster. And the best thing they found was Gerald Wallace from the Blazers. Now Portland at the time had a lot of veteran players that they were trying to get rid of for any future assets they could get. So the Nets, who were 15 and 29 at the time, traded Momento Kerr, Sean Williams, and their 2012 first round pick for Gerald Wallace. Now they didn't mind giving up the pick because it was top 3 protected and they thought it was a weak draft class outside of Anthony Davis, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, and Thomas Robinson. Even though Damian Lillard, Bradley Beal, and Andre Drummond went top 10. Great scouting Brooklyn. So the Nets finished with the 6th worst record in the league and the Blazers used that pick to pick up Damian Lillard who's become a 27 point per game scorer and a top 5 point guard in the league. But instead, the Nets were happy with Gerald Wallace, who they offered a 4 year, $40 million extension after the season. Along with a max $100 million deal to Darren Williams right before his game started declining. And if all of this wasn't enough, it was nothing compared to what they do next in 2013. Number 1, when the Nets traded for KG, Jason Terry, and Paul Pierce. Now if that last one wasn't painful enough for Nets fans, get ready. Because as a lot of us know, this one isn't just one of the worst trades of the decade, it'll always be remembered as flat out being one of the most blatant worst trades of all time. So by the 2013 offseason, the Nets had Brooke Lopez, Darren Williams, Joe Johnson, and the previously mentioned Gerald Wallace on the roster. While the Celtics were seeing the end of their dominance as a big three, or big four, come to an end with Ray Allen leaving the team, and Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett aging well past their primes. But seeing how the Nets just moved to Brooklyn, and were New York's newest team, Nets management felt that they needed to create a buzz around them to help them compete with the Knicks. So for a 37 year old Kevin Garnett, a 36 year old Paul Pierce and a 36 year old Jason Terry, the Nets traded away 5 players in Keith Bogans, Marshawn Brooks, Chris Humphreys, Chris Joseph, Gerald Wallace, and 4 unprotected first round picks. And since then, Boston has turned those picks into Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and pieces in the Kyrie Irving trade which has led the Celtics to never missing a beat even after all three of their big three retired. And they're right back to being one of the best teams in the league. 
Meanwhile, the Nets' Big Five, shockingly, didn't work out. And Paul Pierce only played on the team for one year, and Garnett only did for two. And the furthest all of that got them was a single win in the second round against the Heat. And they're still feeling the effects of this today, and they will be for many years to come. They haven't won more than 28 games in a season since 2015, and while they currently do have some solid young players finally, they're still one of the worst teams in the league. Now, if you enjoyed the video, definitely comment and let me know, and comment which trade you think was the worst, or any terrible trades that I might have missed out on. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.